Hi, my name is Candace Smith, and today I'm going to be talking about metaphysical poetry in regards to Amelia Lehner. In class, we've been reading about metaphysical poetry and what requirements are to be considered as such. We've read works by Don, Crashaw, Lehner, and Marvel to establish an understanding of what type of poetry this is. So, what is metaphysical poetry? Metaphysical poetry was first mentioned in Lives of the Most Eminent English Poets, a book of poems by Samuel uh, Johnson. Uh, some characteristics of metaphysical poetry would be odd or strange language, uh, it would be extremely intellectualized, it would uh, make use of paradoxes, and um, it would use a lot of humor and wit uh, to get its point across. Um, so essentially, uh, it questions reality as we know it. Is there a difference between reality and perception? Um, does God exist? Did we create God or did God create us? Uh, there's a whole plethora of uh, you know, metaphysical questions that could be asked in, uh, in relation to uh, metaphysical poetry. Um, according to the Smith Journal article, uh, Swanee Review, metaphysical poetry now, as in the past, is amply discussed and only vaguely defined. So what's really cool about this genre of poetry is that it's technically not a genre at all. So how's that for a paradox? Uh, even still, uh, many poets have emerged out of metaphysical poetry and have made huge impacts uh, in the literary realm, such as Amelia Lehner. Uh, Amelia Lehner is a pioneer of sorts, considering her writing and literature. She was um, the first English woman to establish a substantial volume of original poems from a female perspective, and the majority of her work was intended for patronage. Um, her, her father was a court musician, um, and so she lived in England and grew up on the skirt tales of the royal court, uh, where she was able to make connections with people in... Um, high authority and, you know, uh, higher powers. Um, so she became very close with a man named Henry Carey, who was heavily involved with Queen Elizabeth. And in her 20s, she became pregnant by him, which caused a mess of drama for her family, and which caused her to be forced to marry a man named uh, Alfonso Lehner, which is where she gained her surname from. Uh, a lot of the information that we have about Lehner is from an astrologer named Simon Foreman that Amelia was in cahoots with in 1597, uh, where they talked and, you know, she told him about her life and he jotted down all of this information in his journals and diaries. And then now we have this as his six historical references. Um, in her life, she developed uh, very strong feminist views uh, and became consumed by the baggage that women had to endure from the original sin when Eve ate from the tree of knowledge. Um, it's evident uh, that these feelings uh, and emotions bled through in her, in her work and is highly discernible in her writings. Um, Lehner's sole collection of poems, let me get this right, Salve de Jus Rex Uderum uh, is riddled with feminine overtones in which she displays her views on a patriarchal society that views women as evil and the cause of all man's suffering. Um, Salve de Jus Rex Uderum uh, takes a go at the Passion of the Christ as well, and it also offers a unique tone of writing that can be compared to Crashaw or Dawn, um, in which she declares, uh, in quote, the good woman in the passion story with the weak evil man, or men, Laner. Um, her poems are written entirely for, from a woman's point of view, and as for her poem, Eve's Apology and the Defense of Women, Laner takes on a truly accusatory tone demanding equality and freedom from the bondage and damnation uh, of a heavily influenced patriarchal society. Uh, it's in question as to why is it necessary for women to carry the blame when men are just as at fault in sin, if not more so. And she makes it very clear um, about this in her writings. She proposes that it's not the responsibility of women to hold such encumbrances descended from Eve. And women should not be held accountable in man's fall from grace. Rather, it be Adam who should carry the burdens. Uh, because he's the one that was in charge. God placed Adam uh, on this earth to rule the lands and the seas and all of these things before Eve was even born. 
you know, from Adam's rib. Uh, uh, quoted from Eve's apology uh, states, but surely Adam cannot be excused. Her fault, though great, yet he was most to blame. What weakness offered, strength might have refused. Being Lord of all, the greater was his shame. Laner. Laner goes on to speak of the evils of man and the terrible deeds they committed against Christ. Uh, and these sins were far more persecuting than the simple loving gesture given to Adam and the curiosity of knowledge uh, from Eve. Uh, this powerful verse speaks volumes uh, when comparing the two sins. Uh, if any evil in her remain being made of him, he was the ground of all. Her weakness did the serpent's words obey, but you and malice God's dear son betray. Whom, if unjustly you condemn to die, her sin was small to do what you do commit. All mortal sins that do for vengeance cry are not to be compared unto it. If many worlds would altogether try, by all their sins, the wrath of God, to get this sin of yours surmounts them all, as far as doth the sun another little star, Laner. So why is it that women are held with such accountability for the rest of eternity in pain and suffering, and also without proper recognition, when in fact it was man who committed the most heinous of crimes? When will the loads be lifted, or at least be carried together equally? Um, Laner states that, Then let us have our liberty again, and challenge to yourselves no sovereignty. You came in this world without our pain. Make that a bar against your cruelty. Your fault being greater, why should you disdain our being your equals, free from tyranny? Laner. Yeah, sure, okay. In our seat... <laughs> I can't even speak. Eve sinned and ate from the tree of knowledge. But you know what? So did Adam. Nobody forced Adam to do it. Eve ate the, the, the fruit because she was curious. Adam ate the fruit because it was beautiful. Uh, he was weak. He was clearly not forced by Eve to do this. It, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and really. Um, uh, so why then is this knowledge and power... Uh, constantly held over the heads of women and repeatedly censored for this uh, this, this original sin. Uh, this is while happening while men continue to live with the privilege of acknowledgement and they use it to exploit the knowledge born out of sin, remind you, uh, to wield it as if a trophy had won from a great battle. Uh, this is not how it should be. Um, all should bear the pain and suffering or let neither man nor woman clutch it any longer. Um, because in fact, these sins were never agreed to, uh, with, you know, in, in, in regards to modern society, but yet women are still stuck with this, uh, this sin, like a life sentence, ball and chain. Um, it's clear that Lanier's poems were, if not nothing more than pr provocative, uh, and clearly groundbreaking uh, material, especially for women in her time. Uh, and the sentiment still remains really prevalent in today's society as well. And I, th I think that um, is pretty important when discussing, uh, especially women's work in literature and how uh, society views women and and men differently. Uh, it It's... It's pretty remarkable, honestly, um, and things need to probably change. And it's awesome that Laner was able to come out and, you know, put her work out there and have people view it. So, yeah, that's all I got. Thanks.